Good evening and welcome to Byline. We have a really great show tonight. I'm so excited to have these two guests because they have been working on helping us save money on our electric bills and uh, helping us reduce our carbon footprint and um, giving and breathing life uh, into policy around one of the most important things that the council's been working on over the last year in the policy arena and that is uh, energy and climate change. And so uh, Darcy Dumont, uh, a town councilor, is here, and Dwayne Brager from the uh, UMass Energy Extension Service is here. He was also a big shot in Boston for a while. We will not hold at him against him. <laughs> Did a great job down there, but he came home so he could uh, work through the university to help communities all across the state learn how to uh, do what they could do around energy to help address climate change. But let's dive right in with you, Darcy. So you were an activist on this issue before you were a town councilor. You're on the Climate Action uh, Committee. Help me with the name of the, the committee. Energy and Climate Action Committee. Energy and Climate Action Committee of the town council. And recently, the town council took an important vote and stepped forward. Tell us about it. All right. Um, uh, the um, Intermunicipal Task Force on Community Choice Aggregation has been uh, working for two years now to uh, make a recommendation to the towns. Um, and the three towns that are working together to put forward um, community choice aggregation are Northampton, Amherst, and Pelham. And Northampton and Pelham have already authorized uh, the towns to go forward with a, a plan of aggregation, and Amherst was the remaining town that needed to authorize um, the basically the executive to go forward with um, approving a plan of community choice aggregation. So last Monday, I'm probably not supposed to say a date on the show, right? Very but, um, recently. <laughs> very recently. Um, the... the um, task force brought forward a recommendation and a, and, and a suggested motion uh, to, um, to authorize the program and the town council uh, unanimously uh, voted for it. To so move that forward with? With the, uh, with, um, it was a motion to authorize the town manager to, uh, to execute a joint powers agreement and also to um, to approve a plan that's going to go to the Department of Public Utilities. Great. Uh, so that's terrific. So um, all of the background work is now done. The town council is voted. Now the staff gets to go to work on putting the plan together. And with the other two communities, that plan has to be the, the all three communities, mm -hmm. then you're going to go to the Department of Public Utilities with your aggregation plan. So for those who don't know yet, Duane, what an aggregation plan and program is, could you explain it? You've been helping communities sure. all over the state do it. You're an Amherst resident and you helped your own town sure. just go through this. So, Yep, so um, community choice aggregation is, is not a new thing um, in Massachusetts and it really dates back to the Electric Restructuring Act of 1997, I think it is. You got or, it. Um, and, I was uh, chair of the Ways and Means Committee at exactly. the time. Exactly. Um, and uh, within that act, there is a provision for, that allows for municipalities to aggregate. It's called municipal aggregation in the act. And it basically allows municipalities to work on behalf of their constituents uh, to um, move forward in, uh, for... Um, uh, um, uh, going out competitively for electric retail supply um, for their customers in their town who um, who care to use it, who care to opt uh, for that program, um, and uh, allows that allows the town to work on behalf of their constituents to really get a competitive advantage to get a good energy price from the retail electric markets that were established under the Re Electric Restructuring Act. And over the course of time, there's been a relatively small number of communities and municipalities that have uh, joined in and, and opted to go forward with municipal aggregation until recently. Um, in the last uh, probably f uh, f seven to ten years, uh, there's been a great deal of interest across the Commonwealth um, on municipalities to uh, aggregate their loads and go for um, a, a municipal aggregation uh, to the extent that there are well over 100 
uh, municipalities within Massachusetts that have active approved uh, aggregations at this point. Fantastic. And many more who are in process. Um, that's correct. Um, and the process is that the towns put together a plan uh, that needs to meet the rules of the, of the, uh, of the, of the act. Uh, and those plans are submitted to the, uh, are actually first reviewed by the Department of Energy Resources um, and, uh, and then are submitted uh, for approval to the Department of Public Utilities. Fantastic. And uh, Darcy, you started working on this well before you got elected to town council. What benefits did you see and why did you put so much energy into it, no pun intended, <laughs> at, before you became a councillor and continued as a councillor? What's the, what are the benefits to this? Yeah, I, I'll have to say um, I'm so excited about this getting enacted because this was something that I worked on before I was a town councillor. It was a, an issue that I actually brought to every door as I was campaigning uh, for town council. And so I'm, I'm thrilled that this is one of my goals that has at least gotten through the first step of uh, uh, actualization. But I was inspired because um, uh, I had heard uh, of other towns that were using it to green up their energy. But uh, in addition to that, I had heard about what is going on in California, which is a more advanced version of, of community choice aggregation. It isn't just the basic bulk purchasing of energy. It includes two other elements, which are uh, providing additional energy efficiency services um, and also uh, development of local uh, distributed energy resources. And, and in, uh, in other words, a development of local solar. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it would be local solar. And um, the ability of communities to, to source, own, and control their own energy. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are a lot of reasons why that is um, advantageous. It allows you to add to the sources, the, sor the renewable energy supply above and beyond what's required under the renewable portfolio standard. Mm -hmm. um, it allows communities to be more resilient because it allows them to do uh, more creative uh, solutions with their electricity, like creating microgrids, using electric vehicles for charging, using energy storage and other such things. And so um, it, uh, it allows you, it would allow a community to sort of accelerate climate action in a way um, that already not only reduces greenhouse gas emissions, um, uh, but it also brings in revenue for the town. So yeah. it's like a win-win. <clears throat> Terrific. So, um, Dwayne, you, you, were you trying to jump in there? Yeah, I would just there? say that yeah, um, go ahead. Um, what, what Darcy's talking about is, is, is really important because that's really what differentiates um, the uh, intermunicipal efforts that we're making with, with uh, Northampton and Pelham and Amherst uh, in that, um, as I was describing before, municipal ag aggregation is a fairly... Uh, reasonably commonplace at this point across the Commonwealth, uh, but it's mostly one town at a time, and it's usually one, and it's uh, with, with the exception of the Cape, the uh, Cape, uh, right. Cape Cod. Um, it's, it, I think, it's, it's it has always been uh, one town at mm -hmm. a time. Right. In this case, uh, we recognize that Amherst itself, nor Pelham, North Northampton, probably. Um, do not have the economy of scale individually to do a more innovative uh, community choice aggregation that we're interested in. So we are all forging together with common, common goals. And importantly, uh, we've been very clear, even in the um, uh, order or bylaw or whatever that was mm -hmm. passed uh, by the town council. <laughs> the provision. Provision that, okay, <laughs> that was passed by the town council that the primary objective of our community choice aggregation is to save green is to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions mm -hmm. and that's likewise across the three um, three municipalities uh, and that will drive certain choices that will be made like how much traditionally generated power versus green power right. re what will be purchased as part of the portfolio correct and and there okay. are many uh, because mm -hmm. yeah you could just say we want to do this to save money Right. And mm -hmm. you, that would lead you to a certain set of decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you start 
with the idea that this is part of our strategy to reduce our carbon footprint, then you're going to be able to, you will make other choices. Correct. Okay. And, and to date, I would say probably the large number of municipal aggregations have been strictly about trying to save a save little money. bit of money. Yeah. There are more and more that are be, um, very interested in reducing um, or uh, increasing the use of renewable energy, but for the most part, they've gone about that by um, buying green power from the grid mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily locally. The big catch here is, is that we are trying to use this um, not only to um, reduce our carbon by buying more clean energy above and beyond the RPS requirements, uh, but also to do that in a way that really brings forward this concept of energy democracy, where we really localize the decisions and actions that the um, the towns take uh, with regard to um, uh, um, uh, making wise decisions uh, and use this program, as Darcy was saying, to really um, move forward and support and help finance and develop local renewable energy resources, particularly solar um, for, for our area. Uh, that can contribute to our um, the supply uh, that we are demanding through this municipal mm -hmm. aggregation. So I know this is very early in the process to be uh, making any pronouncements about what the package will look like, but given what we were just talking about, mm -hmm. saving money versus improving the environment, one possibility is that you can choose the A package or the B package. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The A package could be the lowest cost available based on meeting the state's standards of the mix between traditional mm -hmm. and green mm -hmm. power. And the B package could be exclusively green power. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. there may be a price differential mm -hmm. between the two. But if you're making the if you make the decision to go with the second package, it's because you've decided you are willing to spend the extra money to do that. Is that a fair? Yeah, but I think we want to be um, cautious as well that we're not yeah. expecting, um, given the, the availability of technologies and incentives across the Commonwealth, um, uh, we are not expecting this um, program to be costly to uh, electric ratepayers of, right. of Amherst, Northampton, and Pelham. Pelham. Um, in fact, we're very cautious to make sure that that does not happen. Mm -hmm. We're trying to use this community choice aggregation uh, and using a somewhat uh, some different business models than other municipalities have to try to keep as much of that savings locally so that can be expended, uh, particularly to um, provide um, assistance in energy efficiency measures and in, in uh, low moderate income uh, um, citizens around and residences and rent the renter community um, around the Commonwealth as well. So, um, you know, generally these municipal um, aggregations, you know, probably can save consumers on the order of, of um, I think, uh, eight, uh, um, a dollar or two a month um, in terms of uh, savings from these, uh, from gaining into a municipal aggregation. Our idea is to keep that um, dollar or two a month by every uh, everybody, which across the three towns accumulates to about $180,000 a year. Um, for, for the consumers. Each, for, the, for this municipal aggregation yes. that then has the ability to use that money uh, to, on, for the benefit of the, of the rate payers by investing that in energy efficiency measures, in dem demand side management, s battery storage, solar, to try to uh, really take uh, more local control of our load, reduce our load, reduce our peak loads in particular, uh, and make... make uh, and that's where additional savings can come to the consumers as we are instituting these new practices which you might not otherwise have access to through the traditional utility company products. Exactly. That's right. That basically and, right. and what Duane is explaining here is uh, what we define as CCA 3.0. Mm -hmm. And what you had said a little earlier about the different options, um, if that's what a municipality is offering, we define that as CCA 2.0. <laughs> In terms so, of just buying credits. Right, just from, buying yeah. credits yeah. And, and offering different packages with different credits. But this, the, the version that we're hoping for over the long term is this much more complex uh, program that we define as 3.0 that, that, will, that will provide this local resilience, um, keep, keep the uh, money in the local economy, right. keep the jobs in the local economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it not only have the, has the benefits of 
for rate payers, but it has benefits across the board for local resilience. Okay, so this is getting a little bit in the weeds, but it's a, <laughs> a potentially important point. So um, there are about 30 communities in Massachusetts that currently have traditional municipal electric companies. Mm -hmm. and okay. Some of our electric, electric yep. and gas, electric, gas, and telephone, but they're local municipals and they've been around for a long time. Right. So municipal aggregations that we're talking about now are new, it's a new invention. It's maybe 20 years old or so mm -hmm. in Massachusetts because mm -hmm. 1987 was when we yep. wrote the law. And by the way, this is where I will tell you that I actually put that provision in the plan. It was my top priority nice. as Senate okay. Ways and Means Chair to create municipal aggregation. Oh, well. okay, it was great. not my yep. idea, but somebody okay. brought it to me yep. and I mm -hmm. said, makes sense. So I'm excited to hear how many communities are doing it. But now let's uh, help me understand this. The hundred or so communities, are they now considered municipal electric companies? Not at all. Um, a, a very important distinction. <laughs> um, that's what I, I wanted I, you to clarify. And I don't, I don't suspect Amherst, Northampton, or Pelham are looking to become municipal uh, utilities. <laughs> municipal utilities um, are micro utilities, if you will, uh, that have control and responsibilities for their poles and wires, essentially, yep. uh, and the electric distribution around their city, <coughs> city or town. Um, in, in this case, for the CCA, the Community Choice Aggregation, the utility company, Eversource or uh, National Grid, uh, would still provide the distribution system um, and the billing to, 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 uh, to, to residences. Okay, so now let's take this the next step. Um, traditional municipal electric companies do not have to collect the two fees that are associated mm -hmm. with green mm -hmm. uh, conservation and green energy mm -hmm. and roughly on our, for most of us, on our electric bills, mm -hmm. there are these two little fees. Every month we pay a tiny bit into yep. the fund. 600 million a year is, reach, is raised from each of the funds, mm -hmm. and one fund is used to help with energy audits and implementing energy conservation in our homes, our businesses, our communities, our schools, and the other is to help uh, stimulate and bring to market green technologies that will help uh, mm -hmm. reduce our carbon footprint and, and address climate change. Will our bills in municipal aggregation continue to have those two little fees? And do those two little fees go into the state pool or are they retained in the pool of these three communities sure. to use as we choose? Yep. Mm -hmm. And I the hope work you know the locally. To that, yeah. Dwayne. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Good question. <laughs> okay, Dwayne. And, and, uh, yep. Yeah, okay. So um, enlighten us. Yeah. Okay. It's a little in the weeds. A little complicated. It's very but much I'll get a, to it. But it's a very yeah, important exactly. question. Exactly. So um, I think the way that we're in, envisioning it, and the way that the uh, task force is envisioning in, envisioning it, um, is that um, uh, that um, uh, uh, ratepayers would continue to pay uh, those small fees uh, that go to uh, all the Mass Save programs, as you mentioned, and the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center uh, to support their programs. Uh, that, that small fee will continue to be on the bill, and as we plan it at this point, um, those would continue to um, uh, uh, serve to enable those programs, statewide programs. So they would but, go to the state into those programs. Exactly. Now, the exception is that in, in the municipal aggregation um, bill that you wrote <laughs> or, or put together um, does allow for what's called a Part B mm -hmm. of that provision, uh, which does allow for a municipal aggregation to um, also take over, if you will, the energy efficiency programs away from um, mass, the, ma the statewide mass save program and to um, deliver, ma deliver comparable and approved energy efficiency programs on their own. If they are approved to do that, and it's a much higher lift to be able to demonstrate that the town, the municipal aggregation is enabled to do that, uh, then only in that case would the DPU approve <laughs> you um, and enable you to um, keep that, um, uh, that um, uh, extra charge on the bill for for energy efficiency to, for the community. So now in, in, Massa in Massachusetts, it's only the Cape Cop Cape Light Compact um, that has gone for that Part B, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and they did that um, very uh, quite a quite a quite a while ago. So that's an option that's on the table. Our mm -hmm. local Which, aggregation has yep. not yet made that decision. We yep. probably 
Uh, I think that there's a, a, an agreement that we would need to scale up a fair amount in order to have the capacity to do that. But if we did do it, we would have a massive amount of, of extra revenue. Um, but so I think that uh, the task force is foreseeing that other towns will join in. And so it's just a question of over time. Uh, how many other towns will join? Join this aggregation? Yes. Ah. yes. There, there. And are you going to actively pursue that as a three-town um, entity after you get up and running and everything is stable and working well? Do you Post envision? Post-launch, yes. Post-launch, wow. yeah. The, uh, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is part of our task force, yeah. um, and the, so they're sort of keeping an eye on that as well. Yes. Um, we're really um, cautious to um, submit our plan as the three towns first yes. uh, to get this going in the um, uh, in the vision that we have, <laughs> uh, and then uh, but then um, be open and work out a methodology to for add towns. more towns. Do you have to return to the DB DPU, or are you going to put in your plan that over time you will welcome others to apply to be part of your aggregation? It's a Good question. I think. I think. <laughs> okay. If save another it town, for if, another day. Well, if, if another yeah. town was to put join, the they list. would have to put in their own plan uh, to DPU. Okay. Uh, and and in some way say that we're going to aggregate, but we're going to aggregate join in, in jointly this one. with okay. this. Okay. Uh, with this. So that's very helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's two very important questions right there. The first one is, are you going to go Plan B? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the second is, will you try to take control? I'm sorry, that, that is what, how you take control yep. of your conservation and your... Are you allowed to take your conservation money and leave the research money with the state? Yeah, in fact, I think Part B is only about the mass save energy efficiency okay. money. Okay, that's um, what makes sense because yeah. mm -hmm. you're not going to be able to do research at, at a yep. proper scale locally. Yep. Okay, well, that's a very, very And I will say, just to add to that, yeah. um, our strategy is, as, Mar as Darcy said, um, Let's table the Part B uh, until we get going and afterwards. But our strategy from the get-go is to let's use our program um, just as the way it is to really stimulate um, our right to access Mass Safe, statewide Mass Safe programs, much more robustly than we are currently in Massachusetts. And are and other communities successfully doing that? Because mass save is a very complicated animal, as <laughs> I can see you. Yep. Yes, and, and uh, as a legislator, we, I was trying to get a review mm -hmm. and revise mm -hmm. after 30 years. A program yeah. okay. should be reviewed mm -hmm. and revised. <laughs> okay, okay. And we couldn't get it through mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the utilities control effectively, yep. control mm -hmm. mass save, <clears throat> although yep. on paper it may not appear so, but they effectively control yep. mass save. And there is inherent conflicts of interest there right. mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. conservation means you're going to be uh, delivering less power, right. and um, that I think that was a mistake that the legislature made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't part. I was in the legislature, but I was, I was, I was young and naive <laughs> at the time. Uh, it was in very early. Not so long ago, huh? Okay. It, it was in my very early okay. years, uh, and so I did not uh, have a big role in it at that right. time. But subsequently, I came to understand that that was a structural mm -hmm. mistake. Right. It really needed to be an independent yep. agency yep. with independent yep. capacity. So um, it's such an interesting thing. So are a lot of communities making that move? Are they keeping their money or doing Plan Bs or most? No, no, no. no. Yep. Only, only, only the And are they just are they afraid or they just thought that was biting off too much? Because you've been advising. Mm -hmm. yep. So mm -hmm. what's been the dynamic around the state? Sure. Um, well, there's evidence that, um, and, and clear that it's a much heavier lift uh, in terms of developing your plan. Mm -hmm. The plan that you have to submit for um, to get approved for Part B, which is a separate approval, mm -hmm. um, is a much heavier lift, that, and for good reason, that the town needs to demonstrate um, how they would be delivering energy efficiency that's on par with Mass Safe. Um, and, and so um, we really don't feel like we have the the ability potentially to do that at the get-go um, and we don't want to compromise or je uh, jeopardize our ability to get um, approved for for uh, 
for plan A, mm -hmm. or part A, <laughs> um, uh, by, by putting in something for plan B. So how often do you have to go back to the DPU after they first approve your plan A? Ever? Um, I don't think so. I'm okay. Not aware that we have to and then you are free to go back later and propose a plan B. Correct. Yes. And so any municipality that hasn't done it yet could potentially do it. Exactly. And there's right. been a few that uh, um, have done that. that have, okay. Well, there's been a few that have uh, been submitted for Part B, but have not have been highly scrutinized, and I think either rejected Lowell. or, or lo uh, Lowell. Lawrence. Uh, oh, was it was Lawrence? Ah, uh, so Plan Bs are as tough. a separate entity mm -hmm. are tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And very few communities have tried to do an A and B at the same time. Correct, only the Cape right. Light Compact, only the Cape and that was right. at the very early days of the yeah. uh, municipal aggregation. Okay. I would so say that what we're trying to do, um, as you mentioned, um, a, a, a good observation, mass save can be complicated. Uh, and so one of the things that we are looking to do as a community choice aggregation just with Part A is to try to simplify that and have pr some programmatic a activities mm -hmm. um, within our three communities to bring mass save and cut out some of the complications so that there is more adoption uh, yeah. by by uh, by people within within our communities. Yeah, that if there were ways of yeah. of, cool. of being able to do that, it would be mm -hmm. really terrific. Okay, in the final minute, um, how long? It's forty-seven seconds. When does it go to the DPU? Yeah. <laughs> how long do they take, and when do we think we're going to be able to start this? Oh well, we think we think that we will be able to. Uh, submit to the DPU within three or four months, ideally. Um, we don't know how long it will be in, in, at the DPU, uh, but once we get uh, approval, we think that um, that we then will be able to launch uh, probably best case scenario within six months after that approval. So sometime in 2021, we might 2021. be able to buy electricity from our own community. Absolutely. You heard it here. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. What an inspiring con conversation. I, I really enjoyed having you guys here, and thank you for doing this work. This is so great. Thank you, Sam. Really, yep. thanks. And we'll see you again another time. Yep. And you too. <laughs> <laughs>